Hi, it's Christy, and it's another backstory about one of the mosaic assemblage pieces I've created. This one is a little fish taking a journey, and I'm going to take you a journey through all the little bits and pieces of this mosaic. Come on. There's a lot going on in this piece, isn't there? And I just want to kind of tell you a little bit about it. This is something that combines some of my favorite things, and that is creating with polymer clay, creating polymer clay mosaics, and then assembling everything into this sort of epoxy clay sculptural freeform mosaic, and then painting on a wooden canvas and uh, mounting it in that way. So I've got like multiple stuff going on. So let's talk about it, shall we? So let's start with the fish. Um, I've got a bunch of tutorials online. If you go to my website, christyfriesen.com, you will find a category for tutorials. And one of the things that I show you how to make is a fish using this mosaic technique. Now that particular project, and there'll be a link in the description, is called the fugu fish, a little kind of puffer fish thing. But it uses the same technique. So it's not the same fish, but it's the same process. And essentially what that is is sculpting a polymer clay form and then adding um, little bits of thin polymer clay sheets that are pre-baked and cut uh, to make tiles. And this one uses some that are covered with 24 karat gold as well as you know striations built into the clay coloring. Anyway, it's a blast. So when you create some kind of little creature like this fish, then putting it into a background is super fun. And I really love doing that. I love ocean themes. I live in Maui um, and I've only lived here a couple of years, but I absolutely love it. Being able to go down into the ocean and just snorkel anytime I want and immersing myself in this entirely other world is just wonderful. It's an amazing escape. It's a beautiful way to just feel like you're in another dimension and watching all the interplay of life on the coral with the fish coming in and out of it is, if you haven't done that already in your life, and you're in a position to be able to at some point in your life, I so recommend it. It's great. Um, but anyway, so I draw a lot of that um, and my own fantasy versions uh, of that whole process when I create something like this with an ocean theme. So there's a few things going on with this one. Let's start right over here with these um, cabochons. This is a chrysanthemum stone, and I forget exactly how it's formed. It's sort of a fossil type thing where you've got all these little bits and pieces that sometimes can really look like flowers, but they look like a bunch of chrysanthemum petals that are scattered within. And it obviously started out as a regular cabochon. Now, in my lookings at other people who do mosaics, I had noticed that one mosaic I really liked, someone had taken the cabs, uh, the stone cabs, and cracked them into certain patterns and then put it back together with these cracked cabs. And I just was very fascinated by that whole thought because there's something interesting about a piece that has a wholeness to it that then is broken and it's still like together but fractured, like is it coming back together? Is it moving apart? What's going on with there? There's a lot of powerful imagery with that. So what I did then is, is I just took a couple of these uh, chrysanthemum stones and I have a little process where I can crack them and then put them all back onto my epoxy clay. So I'm working on an epoxy clay background. I usually do it in stages. So I'll work on this and work on that. And, you know, um, but I, I put this back and I liked the idea of some of these little growth coming up and through because isn't that the way it happens in this world uh, to create the universe that we have is that something happens and cools but then other things sort of work their way in with their roots or their pollens and they bloom and they put their down their little wormy bits or whatever it is to kind of turn the thing into something else that is constantly happening and obviously with rocks, that's very much the case. And, and even with the under the sea, you always get the corals are there, but then there's things that are growing on them and putting their little roots in and breaking them apart as they go. It's kind of a, a fascinating process with a lot to glean in your own life as to how that process of destruction and renovation happens to keep making you a new thing. Anyway, so um, what I did here is I put these broken cabs down and then these are a whole bunch of little tube beads. So they're the same as these beads that you see here. I've just shoved them down in on end. So just their little Fruit Loop ends are sticking up. And I, I think that feels so coral reef. You know, you've got all these little bits sticking up 
in a very coral-like manner, which I thought was fun. Then this whole explosion of what's-its um, are a, a fun thing. As, as I, I have my stashes of stuff, and I usually compile them based on, you know, categories. So I'll have a bucket full of just metal stuff. And I had a whole handful of these funky little bead findings, and they're rather poorly put together. They're not super well done. Um, so the ends and stuff are always a little bit problematic. So, so far as jewelry goes, if you're packing them in tight and you're just seeing these wire edges, that's fine. But they were a little bit rough. But I thought, wow, don't they look like some kind of great little sea organism that's just clustering around taking over. So of course they had to get shoved in there along with some other vintage um, metal findings that I had. And you can see this originally was um, kind of a, like a round cap that could have gone around a large bead or whatever, um, or become the bottom of a brooch. Um, but they were very thin metal, so I was able to kind of pinch them and mush them around, including folding this one all up into a crazy shape, which felt very coral reefish to me. And, and then shove in a whole bunch of these little um, eye, uh, head pins little head pins in there to kind of complete that look. These are some wonderful little porcelain beads, again, that look very sea creature-esque, right? And then I happen to have some, a pearl and a star shape. So they'll, they'll put, actually cut a, a star shape out of a, a shell and then implant it in the oyster and then he'll it'll grow that um, pearl covering around it. So I've got a little star-shaped pearl and then I had another little pearl uh, just a porcelain bead, a hollow porcelain bead. So I put one of them there, in there as just starfish to wander around. And then I took one and crushed it with my hammer so that I can add it to these little protuberances to make a fun little coral thing going on. Uh, and in addition to the glass beads, these are little prongs um, that you would have used to grab a rhinestone and then soldered it into whatever you were doing. But I thought they made fun little sticking out bits for coral, right? Okay, a couple of other interesting things here. This is just a wonderful little shell, um, a corner of a shell that's been polished and, and, and turned into like a bead or a cabochon bit, but I loved that, especially because it went with all of these mother of pearl sh um, buttons that I have. So I like to use a lot of mother of pearl buttons because you get all of this wonderful roundness, and as long as you don't see the button holes, it doesn't feel like a button. So I often cover them up with coin pearls or other things. One of the other things are these little stones that, you, well, they're shells that you see here. These are a perculum, um, and they're the rounded part of it, and then there's the flat part of it. And I gathered these at a beach here in Maui um, where the sand has been brought in from some other beach, and there's just tons of these little operculum in there. And operculum are the trap doors that shells make. So if you've got these one, this, you know, like mollusk-type snail shells, um, it has made out of its own shell material a little trap door. So the rounded part is like on the inside to give um, where the little hiding creature is. And then the flat side is the, the, you know, the outside edge. And the flat side usually has a spiral. These are not real noticeable, but when you look at them closely, you can see that they're spiral. And then it's just rounded on the back side. I love these things. And I incorporate stuff from all over. I've got shells from all over the world and things that I picked up in stores and occasionally a few that I've found uh, here and there that I add. I try to be careful about not taking too much of things from a natural place because um, I, I don't want to, you know, you want to leave things for other people to enjoy, right? But I did have a few of these operculum um, and I have loved adding them strategically here and there to make the whole overall piece. And then finally... Uh, I've mounted it on a piece of wood, and I first try to paint that wood with a light acrylic wash so that you can see sort of the wood fibers through it. I like that look, and then add other accents that might be um, pertinent to whatever the design is that's going on. So you can see I've scratched in some different stuff just to, however it meant, uh, however it looked to me, uh, to add to the overall look, because that's what I want, is I want this to showcase the piece, add to the piece, not compete with it, and also protect it a little bit. And then finally, I like to show you the back side. I'm going to very carefully turn this over, and you can see it's got a nice little hanger situation going on in here. Um, I try to sign it and then give it its name as well, um, just to make a whole finished, wonderful piece that gets to hang on someone's wall, and then they can enjoy it as well, and can enjoy all the little bits and pieces that I've gathered on my journey. To so. That's what I think about that. Bye.